Hi, uh, um, back out camping, and this weekend I'm out with uh, David. He's sitting over there under the tarp, and this fine lock is known as a lock lock long. We're at lock long, lock long. Uh, there's a little village over there. It's known as Arica, and this bad boy here is a sea lock. So you don't want to be pitching down at the front. You might get swept away when you wake up. And it's to be an interesting camp today. I'm sure this microphone's picking up the wind. We're out camping in a yellow warren for wind in a forest, so not the smartest of moves. Uh, wind speed's early road, and we're peaking around, you know, 50 miles per hour. But we are in a secluded spot, so we should be okay. And we've got lots of new gear to uh, review, so stay tuned, guys. As you can see, pretty bog standard weather from Scotland today. Grey, murky, but surprisingly, we've not had any rainfall. We're in a nice little forest today. That's David's tent, that's David's tarp, and that's David's. So this is today's shelter from the elements. David's got his DD tarp with him. And as you can see, he's done an excellent job at guying it out. Nice and secure. We're blocked from the wind. Plenty of space. It's like, a, is it 3.5 by 3.5? Uh, we brought in our own wood, good for the environment, to an extent anyway. <laughs> you still have to chop the trees down. I brought with me my little fire pit. We'll be cooking steak on that later on. I don't think Dave is going to be cooking his burgers on that. You're going to go for the frying pan. Frying pan and a few burgers, right? He's going for his frying pan. Brought in our own wood. Our new, relatively environmental friendly fire pit. Catches it at the bottom if it does fall through. But you can get a big roaring fire on that. Got our trichology. Cheers with us, but yeah, hoping for some rainfall because everybody likes a bit of rainfall under the top. Yeah, we think we'll pass on capitalising on that and let the ground heal, however we might use that wood. It's quite damp here, you've got little streams running from the little hill there into the sea lock and you know, the ground's rather mushy as well, which is a pain in the backside. The ground's very saturated. We've had a lot of rainfall recently. And to be honest with you, it's really not the greatest for pitching tents, um, especially if it's wet. It's not even ground. <laughs> it can be even here, but as you can see, there's puddles. David, yeah, he's on a, he's on a bit of a hill, but um, if the ground was less saturated, you could get more to it. You could get a wee tent here, but you would need to move that fire pit. That's my setup over there. I think I'm okay. I think I'm in a flat ditch, but we'll see later on in the evening. So, this is my setup for the evening. I've got with me the crew a hybrid, and as you can see, it's like a bivy tent. It's called the hybrid because it can also act as either a hammock or a bivy tent. I've had that it was a hammock before. But on my end, it was a sensory overload. I couldn't deal with it, so I just slept in the ground. I'm not a fan of hammocking. So let's not talk about that, but it's in another video. It's a... Technically, it's a bivy tent. I would say it's more of a small tent, but they advertise it as a bivy tent. We've got the fly sheet, polyester, 5,000mm hydrostatic head. The inner is polyester. However, the ground sheet is nylon, also 5,000mm. And uh, the weight of this, the, the total weight, including taking into account, it can also be a hammock. It's three kilograms. But once you take away all the hammock material, it brings it down to about, I'd imagine, two and a half kilograms. So, you've got the vestibule area up here. You can get your bag in here. You can get your boots in here. There's no vestibule area at the side. This just comes straight down parallel with the inner of the tent. So tonight's setup, or before we go to tonight's setup, talk about the inside of the tent. I've got a really thick and really long mattress in here, and it just about fits. You've got this little small gap here to the side, and then you've got a very small gap at the top. So you're really, I mean, me, six foot three drink, you're just getting myself in here. Um, if you want to do any cooking or that, I would advise put a little tap above it or lie on your stomach and do it in the vestibule area. area. 
Um, it will be claustrophobic. It's a, they do advertise it as a bivvy tent. So tonight's set up, I've got with me the Aero Google mattress. Again, very thick, very wide, super comfortable. It can, 10, 10 centimeters thickness it advertises as. And the weight on this bad boy is 1.2 to 1.4 kilograms. So for a sleeping pad, it's not very lightweight. And compact wise, it doesn't compress down very well either. You can take it up the mountains, but it will take up a bit of space in your bag. But it's super comfortable. Initially the R value was four, but they've updated it to five. I've not really had it down to cold temperatures, um, so I can't really truly comment on its capabilities. But um, comfort wise, you're not gonna get a better sleeping pad than the AeroGoGo mattress. Very akin to the Trekology mat, which has a predisposition to bursting after uh, very little use. I've got with me the Doutosphere X Doubter Exosphere sleeping bag. Stretches by an additional 25%. As you can see, I'm going for comfort. Overkill for tonight. I think temperatures are to be between 8 and 10 Celsius tonight. That bag has a comfort to limit of minus 40, minus 10. But this bag, I've had it for like, if you've been on my channel for a long time, you'll see I've had this bag for a long time. Never let me down. I've had it down to a couple of Celsius below freezing and it's been, it's done the job brilliantly. And I've just got like a flex tail pillow with me. Does the job, moves about a lot. But then I've got my little flannel pillow, which I absolutely love to bits. But we'll see more on this in the evening, when I'm in it. But guys, let me know what you think about it. Uh, as a bivvy tent, they can be very cosy, but very limited. And if you're quite claustrophobic, probably not the tent for you. But let me know what you think. Here we have David set up, and I love this tent. It's the Alp Kit Tarp Star 1. It's a pyramid tent, and guys, check out the vestibule. Now he's put his own little uh, ground sheet down, or I think he's put a little tarp down. But look at that vestibule! Oh my goodness, you can get two people. You get me and guys sitting in there, and then David lying in his tent. That would be nice and cosy. Um, weighs in. The total thing is 950 grams. The pack size is 25 centimetres by 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres and it's a polyester material with a hydrostatic head of 3000 millimetres so if we have a little look inside I'm going to get down now it's a purely mesh tent single mesh tent but I'm going to swing the camera around and there you have me sitting in the vestibule Head's not even touching the roof of the tent. So I'm gonna go a little further back. Oh, you can get two people in here. You can get guys sitting there, me sitting here, and then David could be lying in his little bag. This would be great for the little here. This would be absolutely brilliant for the mountains, given its weight. The comfort in this, whoa. This is a luxury. The only thing that I'm concerned about is there's no ventilation up here. The ventilation purely from down here. Nice. Kind of ventilation up here. But this is this is my it's sort of like the Lanshan, it's like the Lanshan with a big vestibule. And uh, guys, I am actually in love with this tent. This is uh, my type of mountain tent. Uh, David set up. Ooh. I don't know what your setup is, so I'll get back to you on that. Oh Speak of the devil, do you know what your, do you know what your setup is? Pipe Dream 600 sleeping bag. I'm pretty sure it's anywhere between minus 12, minus 18, depending on what rating you look at. The big Agnes insulated air core ultra sleeping pad with the R rating of 4.2 and uh, it's a foam mat, just a foam mat under it, can't you mind the name it? And uh, how have you found it? Both oh, the sleeping pad and the sleeping setup. mat. Perfect setup. I won't have long until it's too hot, but just now it's an absolute perfect setup for how small it compresses. I think the sleeping pad's about seven or 800 grams, can't remember, but I can't complain at all. I'm going to get a summer bag sometime soon, but just now I don't need it. 
that, that sleeping bag's really good at heat regulation, so even when it is a bit mild, it's still, you're still a spot on temperature through the night, you're not too hot, so I can't complain with it. You've not really had the opportunity in the cold jet with these two? I've not had it anywhere below zero just now, mm. I don't think, so I can't, I can't say it's really good at them temperatures rated, but we'll see how it goes next year. But the mat's comfortable? Oh, I love the mat. Absolutely. Compact? Mat. Aye, brilliant. Yeah, I would say about... Maybe just smaller, a 2 liter size bottle, so that's how small it is, it'll get in your pack and it'll not take up much space at all. Good man, thank you for your input. Guys, let me know what you think about this tent, because I love it. So it appears that the adverse weather isn't getting much better, if anything in the last 50 minutes it's got profoundly worse. Uh, we're alright because we're sheltered amongst the trees, uh, preventing most of the rainfall coming through and uh, especially the wind, I mean I'm sure this microphone can pick up the wind battering off the trees but as I spin it around, uh, yeah look at that lock, you don't want to be in a boat in that lock, it's got little waves. Uh, there was a little ledge over there, can't remember if I recorded it, uh, but the, the wind's uh, pretty ferocious. We looked at the Met Office, or was it the BBC, and it said currently wind speeds are around 42 miles per hour, and the next hour it's to significantly drop to 19, the wind gusts. So uh, here's hoping, it's uh, certainly been a stormy camp so far, but we're going to get the fire on the go. Uh, we've got a little portable speaker with us. We've been playing some hard France in uh, late 90s, early 2000s and then uh, we're going to have some burgers and steak but uh, actually best camp of the year so far, I don't know, there's something about it I mean this is, we were supposed to camp three week, uh, two weeks ago, it didn't happen we were supposed to camp last week, it didn't happen and then finally, it's, uh, it's finally happened but, eh? We're actually out camping in a storm. Our name's Storm Kathleen, and uh, yeah, it's uh, worse. It's actually worsened in the last hour. We've had some heavy rainfall. Again, we're still protected thanks to the trees, but it's it's ferocious out there. Once you go out into the open, you're just getting hit with rain and uh, the strong winds. Uh, the lock is still uh, you know nasty, sinister looking. But it's been a good night so far. Eh, hey, don't want much else to say. Other well, than hoping to get more videos done for the channel. Um, hoping to get back into the gist of things. We're doing, you know, in brackets, easy camps first. Eh, hey, and then hopefully back out into the mountains. So, but again, I'm using my new phone. So hopefully it's better quality for you guys, better quality, generally makes the videos more enjoyable. But this tarp's holding up strong, a little fire pit. It's better than that mesh fire pit, because when everybody purchased the mesh fire pit, you know, for £15, it only lasted you know, about 10 uses. And it was a pain in the backside putting by, and uh, yeah, even with the mesh, there would be still some little, little flames, sparks making its way through hitting the ground, but this, you know, captures it pretty well, thanks to this little container, this little floor at the bottom. Uh, I'll pop that fire pit, a link to it, a hyperlink, uh, in the description, and you guys can check it out. But, so far so good, about 7 o'clock in um, the evening, we're going to wait until that dies down, 
put the grill on over there, lying on the ground. And once that's on, once there's some embers, get the steaks on the go. So much I'll be able to fly on it. Oh, look at that! It is about 10 pm and the weather's starting to die down, but we've had some rain shovels put it out. That's the winds, certainly, that's the worst out of the way. And it's been a pretty good night, hasn't it, David? Can't go where I thought it was a good night, so it was. Can't complain, it was a good night. Fire pit, it's a cracker. David's a big fan of the fire pit, the fire pit slash grill. Um, I didn't film the steak being cooked, but uh, we did get some burger footage in there. But put it this way, there's two of us, and uh, we've not had an, you know, an overtly big fire or anything like that. And we've been very toasty. I mean, temperatures are still around, what, 9, 10 Celsius. But the rain's been coming and going throughout the evening and we're just about to head to bed in the next hour or so I think because uh, we're certainly out of uh, liquids David, liquids, we're out of liquids so. uh, there's no liquids left, so there's no liquids left, you know what I mean by liquids, you know the healthy liquids of course and uh but guys let me know what you think about that little fire pit it comes with a little grill cook your steak and your burgers and whatnot on it but what have we had playing? We've had the house martins, we've had some house tri uh, hard trans, we've had some timber timber, robin, you had oasis one. All sorts. All sorts. So if you all can recommend some some bands, what's the best camping music? I felt like the house martins nailed it, you know, house martins slash the beautiful south. Don't know David, what do you think? What's the best type of camping music? I love trance. Trans. Oh, I like my friends, so I trans. don't know, mixed opinion. Trans. Trans music. Trans music while out camping. But uh, we're going to head to bed soon because we're getting up super early for Derby D in Glasgow. David's hoping for a Rangers win. Uh, absolutely no comment on my end. I don't want to lose half my subscribers. <laughs> One hoops. <laughs> if you're wondering what it's like inside the tent, this gives you an idea. I wouldn't really describe it as a bivy tent. I would describe it more as a small tent. Uh, a bivy tent is generally more claustrophobic, like the OEX Fox, if you can all remember. Another classic example, in my opinion, of a bivy tent would be the Coleman Cobra. But look, I've got I've got a bit of headroom here, and um, I'll try and show you as much as possible. I would need to like uh, spin the camera around, so we've got a pocket over here. So that's the light there that's uh, showing my face. We've got a little pocket behind me, and uh, not much to brag about. Look, I've got plenty of room. Um, the vestibule area, hopefully the light will bring it down. This is the vestibule area here, I'll zoom out a little. There's my bag there, I've got my shoes underneath it. Look, uh, plenty of space to get your bag, your shoes. Uh, if you're cooking, you'll need to bring the bag in to the tent, baby tent. Do a little cooking here. But look, uh, if you're going to go to sleep, put your bag and your shoes in there. No issues what's... The, the tent itself 
Now the inner, the inner's rather interesting. Um, so the inner attaches to the outer using these little uh, velcro strips. Now, how do we? Where's this little zip? And I'll show you the velcro strips. I actually like this tent. I'm not going to lie. It's not the worst. There's absolutely nothing that rang with it. Now, uh, I'm going to get this little head touch here and I'll show you how the outer attaches to the inner. If I can... <sighs> yeah, that's not coming out, is it? Try it once more. Come. Yeah, it's stuck in there. Uh, hopefully this will actually show you. So, I've got some light so far. So, uh, this is the fly sheet. This is the inner. So, inner, fly sheet. We've got these little vehicle straps and that's how they both connect rather unique but look um, I'm currently in I'm just sitting in my trousers and my jumper and what well, it must be about 8, 9 at a push 10 celsius outside and I'm nice and warm that's the pros about bivy tents because there's less dead space is better at trapping heat and uh, yeah I've got I've got plenty of room to move about I've actually got plenty of room to change into new clothes the length is fine again I am a very tall gentleman at six foot three my feet aren't touching the bottom and my head isn't touching the top I don't feel claustrophobic in the slightest. I can see how a lot of people would find the OEX Fox claustrophobic, which is a way more low profile, low lying claustrophobic tent than this. Um, so if you all, if anyone likes uh, camping, and uh, if anyone likes hammocks as well, look, this tent can do the job. This hybrid can do the job. I didn't give it a good review with the hammocks because look again I'm not a fan of hammock camping it's a sensory overload and it's hassle for me and me alone but if you're into your hammock camping and your tent camping this tent could do an absolutely fantastic job at it um, am I going to take it out again? I'm going to take this tent out again uh, I want to take it out in winds where I'm not protected from the elements I want to take it out in the rain where I'm not protected from elements I'm not taking it out in a hammock camp I'm done with hammock camping and I really want to capitalise on the inner I've not been out much in the winter because of uh, personal reasons and uh, you know other stuff but I want to capitalise on the inner so that when the inner's an insulated inner that's uh, good for trapping heat it requires a pump uh, I've bought two pumps so far and they haven't worked so next winter I'll get a proper review on this with the insulated I know anyway it's bedtime it's about 11 p.m. it's derby day in Glasgow and hopefully the green side pick up three points tomorrow David is hoping that the blue side pick up three points uh, but yeah, I'm actually happy with this footage. It's been really interesting weather. Thankfully, we're again we're protected. Uh, we'll see how David got on with his setup and his new tent. Uh, I'll, we'll see how I get on with this tent. We're expecting shivers throughout the night, but not too much. But um, I'm actually really anticipating a warm sleep. A warm sleep and a cozy sleep. I just realised so you, you can actually access the tent from this end over here and this end behind me. So there's, you can enter it from two points. You could, in theory, enter it from the vestibule area. But that would be unnecessary. But guys, um, I really hope you enjoy this footage because uh, because um, I'm really enjoying filming it. But let me know what you think about uh, David's tent, uh, David's setup, uh, my setup, this tent, and the fire pit. So I'm going to sign out and I'll catch you all in the morning.
good morning yeah. Oh, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. What an interesting sleep it was last night. The winds did not die down. There was at one point, I woke up and it was very ferocious sounding last night. And I woke up with a little mini panic attack. I managed to control it. You know, the flushing, the fear. You know, it sinked into the environment. I was fully alert. It just felt like that the winds were extremely stormy and as if the lock was going to come in. I managed to rationalise and put myself to sleep. A uh, comfort warmth wise, look, the ground here isn't flat and this big aero go go mat did a job. Uh, I made the stupid mistake of not putting myself in the sleeping bag, using the sleeping bag as a blanket and as the winds continued throughout the night this tent became very drafty and I was too lazy to zip the bag up. I wasn't cold, I wasn't warm, I wasn't really lukewarm to be honest with you, I was just, you know, it was just sufferable. So it was alright, got about what, 8 hours sleep, so I can't really complain, interrupted but 8 hours sleep. Woke up this morning, the wind's still apocalyptic, apocalyptic, apocalyptic out there. There was a big gust that shook the tent, and you know, taking into account, when amongst the trees, it must have been one hell of a gust. But, yeah, sleep was alright. There was plenty of space in this tent to move about. Uh, Quite like it, quite like it. But let's see how David got on. Let's check a little vestie out during the day. And as you can see, get your bag in there, get your shoes in there, bring the bag out, give you an idea what the space is like. Uh, there you go there. There we go. And uh, yeah, by all means, bring the zip up. Not too bad. It's a cute little vesty, not going to lie, it's a cute little vestibule. So David, uh, last night's performance, how was it? Oh, well I didn't sleep so I did. And I'll eat it. I found a lot better than I thought it would in the wind anyway. Did my buds considering there's no guy out points and it's only one cold holding up. Uh, I can see you getting hit with more of the wind. Uh, I took a few hits and it was interesting. Hey, how was your sleeping mat and sleeping bag? Spot on. Spot on. Aye, brilliant. Keeping that one anyway. Guys, again, let me know what you think about David's tent. It's called the Outkit. Oh, it's hiding. Uh, the Outkit Tap Star. Oh, on, the Outkit Tap Star One. We're hoping we can get a four season uh, inner as well for those winter months. Let me know what you think about the crew hybrid. Turns into a little bivy tent. Wouldn't say a bivy tent, more of a really small tent. And a hammock. With a fly sheet, you just wrap it over, peg it down. You've got two little guy out points here. And then down at the bottom you've got another one. However, when I used it as a hammock, this little section here, this little clip, just um, tore apart. It broke off whilst I was, which was rather infuriating. That little cuts for when, again, you're using it as a hammock and you want to wrap the fly sheet around the little another tent and the tree. Um, but apart from that, I much prefer it as a bivy tent. I'm not a hammock man, so let me know what you think. David, what's your uh, predictions on today's match? Hopefully Rangers can win it. Finger, fingers crossed. What are you going for? Yeah. What are you going for? Rangers. What's your score? Oh, I don't know. 2-1. Two 2-1. One. Two one. Uh, I don't know. I think Rangers have got the title win the bag, but it won't surprise me if Celtic win all the old forms, but lose all the stupid games. I'll go for 2-1 uh, Celtic. <laughs>
But guys, uh, that's us uh, signing out. We hope you enjoyed the content. David, a camp, that's a, that was a 10 out of a 10 camp for me. I don't know about you. No, brilliant. That was a, a world class camp. So let me know what you think of the video. Uh, and uh, I take care of you all. See you on the next adventure.